Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. Today's video is going to be about the trip I took with my family to New Orleans. I'm going to lightly touch on some of the things that we did while we were there and also take you shopping with me at Louis Vuitton. So that's kind of the main event that I want to show you and that happens towards the beginning of the video. The first thing we did when we got there, well, we drove kind of almost through the night. We got there about 2 a.m. and stayed at a beautiful Airbnb. If you are looking for an Airbnb in the New Orleans area, I found an amazing one that has three bedrooms and two bathrooms, and it was located pretty centrally, and we loved it because we went with my brother-in-law and then, of course, my family, which is my husband and I and our two boys, so we all had our own space. We got there at like two in the morning and so when we woke up the next day we were tired but we powered through and we went to the world war ii museum and we didn't get there till mid-morning and we stayed until mid-afternoon and that wasn't nearly enough time i think there's like seven buildings at this world war ii museum in new orleans and it is incredible how much information that you can learn about and see there. And there's so many exhibits with great big pieces of machinery and weaponry and photographs and videos. And I mean, it's just, it's just insane. And we saw just the tiniest bit of it. My favorite part was the movie that was narrated by Tom Hanks. We saw that at the end and it was a 40 movie where they brought in like pieces of like a fuselage and they had our seats vibrating and I think they had wind blowing. I don't know. They had a lot of stuff. I think they had smoke. There were a lot of special effects that went along with the movie and really made it feel like you were almost there. I mean, not there obviously, but almost there. And so we did that and then we went and ate at the Creole house, which is really good on Canal Street. And Canal Street, I discovered, was a lot like Michigan Avenue in Chicago. It has the higher end stores on it. And I wanted to go to a couple of them, but when it came down to it, I was there for a trip with my family. And I really only had time to go to Louis Vuitton and I barely had time to do that. So I'm walking down Canal Street and headed towards Louis Vuitton. I am on my own, and so I'm trying to be somewhat aware of my surroundings. So I really didn't think I would get a chance to go. It's hard for me to get and frame the Louis Vuitton up there, but there it is, and I'm getting ready to go inside. And when I got there, I had a mission. I brought with me something which I gave to them kind of at the start of my visit. And so I was able to leave with a souvenir. And I'm gonna pull that out here in just a moment. But while I was waiting for that little thing to be completed, I shopped and the things that I found, they were very tempting, let's just say. The things that I found that were the most tempting were Damier Alicious. I think that's how you say it, Damier Alicious speedy 20 but of course i've reached my maximum on speedy 20s unless i go and modify my rules and say i can have four canvas speedy 20s and four leather speedy 20s because i have four speedy 20s and i'm trying not to have more than four of any particular style in my handbag collection but the damier alicia speedy 20 in the blue and the green is just so nice and I wish I would have taken a picture inside but when you look inside the pocket is like a miniature version of that Damier Alicious canvas sewn to the twill material so that is super cute it's like a nice pop of fun when you open the bag up and so I would say that was the first thing that caught my eye the Lexington pouch, and I believe it's also Damier Alicious. It's like a patent version of the Damier Azur, and the color is a little more vibrant than the Damier Azur is, but it looks a lot like Damier Azur at a glance, but it has a patent finish. And I'll put clips as I'm talking about these things in, 
And I thought that that was really cool. But again, like I've shown you so many bags over the course of my time here on the channel. When a bag dents in on the sides, it basically makes a bag smaller. And that's what the Lexington pouch did. They also had a pochette accessoire, which I don't think I took a picture of it in the Damielicious collection. And that was like the old version, which was called the new model of the pochette accessoire. So basically just like this, and it just had the D-rings like here and here. It didn't have them like here as well. And so I thought that was interesting that they kind of went backwards on that pochette accessoire. And when it came to the Damielicious, they had it in the two color palettes. They had it in like a pink and an orange combo and then a blue and a green combo. And I definitely preferred the blue and the green combo to the pink and the orange. And out of all the bags I saw, my favorites, of course, were the Speedy 20. And then I think I would also rank that Pochette Essessois up there as well. I like the older model of it. The only thing that's unfortunate is they were charging like the new model price, but not giving you those benefits. It did have the new model. And when I say new model, I'm talking about the most recent model because the model before the most recent model, that one was called the new model. If I can make this any more confusing, I will attempt to do that. <laughs> but the version of the Damielicious had the newest model's organization inside. It just didn't have the new D-ring configuration with the chain. So I continued to wander around and I got to see this gorgeous Capucines that I had never before seen in person. I've seen a picture of it on Foxy LV on Instagram. And if you don't know Foxy LV, I'll link her down below, but she always seems to have the scoop on Louis Vuitton. And this Capucines, the detail on the LV and on the rings that hold the handle was just incredible. Like three-dimensional blossoms. I think they may have been cherry blossoms, but I don't know for sure. They were so, so pretty. And I also got to see a few other Capucines. I got to see one that had the crown up at the top with the mother of pearl, as well as a couple of other colors. There was like a buttery color that was almost like squash, but muted down a little bit. And I thought that was pretty, but not necessarily for me. The bag that surprised me the very most when I was there was the Pochette Matisse East West. It shocked me. I put my items inside and they all fit comfortably. I couldn't believe it. And so if that bag was cheaper, I would buy that bag as my May bag, but I can't spend over $3,000 on that bag and feel good about it. I think that would create anxiety for me. And you can't find those on the pre-love market for a deal, at least not right now, at least not what I've seen. Now that may change. There may be one that pops up somewhere and it may be a deal, but I haven't found one yet. The one I looked at at the store had a cream background with a lilac colored contrasting monogram. And I think it's part of the marshmallow collection. And I loved how it had like on the little loop above the lock, it had a combination of the cream and the lilac. And the same thing with the top handle, it was double layered. The bag rested so comfortably on me. I'm telling you, it took serious willpower not to leave the store with one of those bags, but the purple and cream combination isn't perfect for me. The monogram isn't perfect for me. I already have a Speedy 20 in monogram. The cream is not perfect for me. I already have a Georges VB and a Busey in cream from Louis Vuitton. And the black is not perfect for me. I already have an Alma BB in black emprunt, and I also have a Saint Laurent Small Lulu in black with gold hardware. So I need them to come out with some more options. They do have it in the newest Demi Alicious collection with the pink and the orange, but that's not a color palette for me. They also have it in the Dune with the black handle, but that bag is so expensive for a canvas bag. Again, over $3,000 for a canvas bag. I just can't do it. I love Louis Vuitton canvas. It's like 
one of my favorite type of materials to carry because of how carefree it is. But spending over $3,000 on a canvas bag is pretty tough for me to swallow. So I think I'm just going to wait and see what comes available as time passes by. So after I saw those things, I just wandered around a little bit more and I saw the lock and walk, which I'm not a super big fan of that bag. It was very simple and it was an open bucket bag. It didn't really seem to have much to it in my opinion. If you like bucket bags, it would be a fantastic option. But I found over the course of my handbag collecting that bucket bags are not for me. Now, there was also the Damier Pop, but they only had the great big one in terms of the keep all. They didn't have any of the smaller speedy style, and those are the ones that I would be most drawn to with that Damier Pop collection. And of course, those came in like a green and a red, I think, and a yellow and a blue. And I really like those. I wouldn't rule those out on the pre love market down the road. The collection that Pharrell Williams did with the Speedies where he did the leather in the monogram in the red and the green and I'm not thinking of the other colors, but the leather version that was like $10,000, I don't have any interest in that. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's not happening for me and I wouldn't carry those anyway, but I could see getting the Damier Pop with the blue and totally rocking that when I went to University of Kansas stuff. And I am donning my University of Kansas sweatshirt today, despite the fact that they lost yesterday. It was a rough year for the University of Kansas basketball team, but I still have this on from yesterday, so I'm going with it. So I mentioned that I did pick up a souvenir from Louis Vuitton, and I'm gonna pop it in here right now. It's not really, an unboxing or unbagging. I do have it stored in one of the pouches I got from an insert company. Actually, I guess this is from Samorga. I usually have Zumani. I have so much Zumani, but when I very first started collecting handbags and doing YouTube, I bought a few Samorga inserts because I was influenced to do so by some of the other YouTubers out there. I don't necessarily, I mean, they're very good quality, don't get me wrong, but I do prefer Zumani. I think the felt quality is very similar, but I do prefer the feeling of the Zumani by just a slight little bit. They're both excellent though, what can I say? So as you can see, I have two little things peeking out here. I pack these like this, because I wanted to protect them. And so I put them in this pouch so they wouldn't get denser dings in the leather. And I have both of them in a Zumani little slip pocket. I love these slip pockets. They come with like every Zumani thing that I get. Zumani is so generous. They always send me my inserts. And when they do, they come with these little slip pockets. And I do have a discount code for Zumani. It's HBHW20. And so let's reveal what's in these little pouches. These pouches help me get these two things home safely. So first is my luggage tag in black with a combination of the Louis Vuitton fleurs. The flowers on this are ever so slightly too big for the tag, and I knew that. So they do overlap the edges of the tag a tiny bit. I got this tag created for a particular bag. Let me grab it. This is the Boston bag by Dress Up Your Purse and it's done in the Togo leather and it has the Vaquetta trim that goes around it like the Keep All does. So it's sort of a combination of the Speedy 20 and the Keep All. And I love this tag with it. I think it just dresses it up. This leather on this bag feels amazing. And I do have a discount code with Dress Up Your Purse as well. It's HBHW15 for 15% off. 
and I am in love with this combo. I think it just gives it some va va voom, and this is such a carefree bag for me. I do love black and gold handbags because I do find that they're really easy to touch up if I hit a corner on something, and so I think I may move into this one now that she has her fun new New Orleans accessory. The New Orleans Louis Vuitton store used to have their own stamp, and that has went away, sadly. But I was able to get two fun ones. Let me show you the next one. So here we go. You ready for the reveal? I got Miss Vivian on a VVN tag. Now, this tag had some patina to it. I picked up these tags on eBay, and so this one didn't take quite as well to the Viquetta. I think the, the gold foil takes better to brand new fresh Viquetta than it does to one that has some patina on it. So there was a slight little bubble on one of the edges and I'm hoping that doesn't flake off, but it is a possibility. But luckily there's not quite as much contrast between the gold foil and the Viquetta as there is on the black one. So fingers crossed that she stays looking beautiful. And I figured I would place her on my Speedy 20. I usually wear my Louis Vuitton facets charm on my Speedy 20, but I thought Vivian would have some fun hanging out here. And so there she is. I usually carry my bags with the handles down and then use the handles to grab and go out of the car. And I do think that Vivian looks super cute hanging that way. Now you can loop these tags directly through and not use the clip system. But for now, I think that she's gonna just hang out like that on my Speedy 20. You can pick up these tags on pre-loved websites. I found mine on eBay and there are counterfeits out there. So if you wanna be sure you got a real one, you do need to get it authenticated. If you get it stamped at Louis Vuitton, they will essentially authenticate it for you because they won't stamp one that's not real. So I now know with 100% certainty that these two tags are real. And I think Miss Vivian looks super beautiful on my Speedy 20. So those are the only two souvenirs I picked up from Louis Vuitton. So that wraps up my trip at Louis Vuitton. I would have loved to go to Fendi because I really want to try on the midi chain baguette. And I don't even know if they have that in stores. I assume they do, but I didn't have a chance to go back and check it out. The next day we went to Oak Alley Plantation and it was absolutely stunning. It was an operational plantation during times of slavery. And we got to tour the main house and learn about the lifestyle of the people who live there. Driving up to Oak Alley Plantation. It is out this window. Yes, very, very cool. Lots of amazing, oh my God, look at the trees. So pretty. Hey YouTube, I'm at Oak Alley Plantation and it is just absolutely gorgeous here. I'm gonna flip the camera around, but I am wearing this like silky top just in case it's cool inside. Got my Saint Laurent camera bag. When I did my pack with me video, I packed my Louis Vuitton key ball, which I used on the way down here in the car. It was great to stick on the floor of the car and have all my stuff. And I also brought my Saint Laurent wristlet as well as my Lululemon belt bag. And I was gonna use the belt bag on our swamp tour. And I'm not sure if I'll ever use the wristlet. I may just use the Saint Laurent camera bag. It's working so well, it's lightweight, and it holds more than the wristlet. So that's where I am so far on my bag usage for the trip. Here are the grounds. This house is absolutely beautiful. We have a tour at 1245. I love these trees that touch the ground with the branches. I don't know if they're banyan trees, we may find out. And I like the ones that have like that mossy stuff coming off of them too. I think the ones down there may, but just absolutely gorgeous. Here is a better head-on shot 
of the house. Look at these trees. They are just incredible. And again, this is Oak Alley Plantation. It's a definite must-see. We ate at the restaurant. It was fabulous. I mean, just incredibly wonderful food. We had some sort of a, a seafood dip and crawfish etouffee and sausage and blackened gulf shrimp. It was so good. These pink flower bushes are freaking stunning. Love, love, love. All of this is so pretty. Getting ready to tour the mansion. It's very, very regal and majestic. The flowers are just absolutely beautiful with these trees lining the walkway. Trees closest to the house, that's going to be the first three on each side, were transplanted by slaves between 20 and 50 years old before the house was built. The rest of the trees in the alleyway also get transplanted again by slaves, except the only difference is after the house was already built. Today, the trees are about 250 years old, and this does make them middle-aged oaks. In another 250 years, they're going to be senior citizens. This is the rose garden yeah, over here. The bathroom. I'm sure some of y'all think about the bathroom right now. Don't worry. I got asked about the structure over here. Uh, so, this is a fun little gift shop. I've heard they have lots of cool stuff. They have all kinds of fancy candy treats, including sugar free. Yay! The artwork here, some of it's gorgeous. I love that painting up there. You can get smaller versions. Not quite as cool as the painting up top, though. I love that. That painting is really cool. I just am obsessed with the trees. We have our local handbag section. Can't forget that. But some super nice strap action going on. These pictures are all painted on wood and stone. All by the same guy, kind of at the swamplands. And then we also spent some time in the slave quarter area. The main house is the original main house, but the slave quarter area has been reproduced. And they had an individual speaking while we were there, and he described to us the lives of the slaves who lived on that plantation, and it was just awful. It broke my heart, but I really appreciated learning what I did from him. After we left Oak Alley, we went back to New Orleans and caught an Uber down to the French Quarter and did a little bit of wandering around and walked down Bourbon Street as it was getting dark. And that was slightly terrifying for me, I have to say. I don't like all of that loud, loud, loud music blaring at me and changing every couple of feet I walk. I was not a fan of all of public drunkenness. I don't drink, my husband doesn't drink, and of course our kids don't drink, so we were like totally sober walking down Bourbon Street. <laughs> But it was an experience and I don't think my kids will ever forget it. And so I liked sharing it with them in that sense. At that point, once we walked the entire street, we took an Uber back. I forgot to mention that before we walked down Bourbon Street, we did eat dinner at Landry's and it was the most amazing meal we had the whole trip. And I was sort of a little bit negative about going to Landry's because I thought it was a chain and I think it is a chain but there's a reason why it's a chain it was incredible I had the redfish there and it was so good the most delicious food I had the entire time we were there 
One of you mentioned in the comments that you wished you knew I was going because you would have recommended some restaurants for me. And I'm curious if Landry's would have been one of them. We tried to go to Cafe Du Monde the next morning, but it was so busy that we just ended up going to this place right down the way from it. I think Bon, B-O-N was in the name of that place and got our beignets there and they were fantastic. I've heard Cafe Du Monde can't be beat. And, and if that's true, I just don't know how those beignets we had could have gotten much better. They were fantastic. We had both the plain kind and the bananas foster kind. And on that day, on the next day after Oak Alley, we had a swamp tour scheduled, but it got canceled because of the thunderstorms. So we waited for those to subside and put our rain jackets on, and we ended up having to walk through some rain. And we went back down to the French Quarter and spent some time shopping. When we had went the day before, most of the shops were kind of closing, except for some of the, I don't know, the cheaper, more like touristy ones right by Bourbon Street. And so we walked through a bunch of fun ones and picked up a few souvenirs. And we also got to hear some live music at a little place in Frenchman's Quarter when we stopped to have a drink. We walked over to Frenchman Street because we heard that was the best place to hear live music. And I have to say that I did not love Frenchman Street. And it may have just been that we were there, you know, before dark, before the party started. But it wasn't somewhere I wanted to stay. My son, though, he got to do the thing that he wanted to do the most when we went down there my youngest son. He wanted to eat fried chicken and there was a Willie's there and he had totally skipped lunch because we ate an oyster bar and he is not a fan of seafood for the most part. And so he got to eat some fried chicken at Willie's and he said it was the best fried chicken he ever had and he's kind of a fried chicken connoisseur. So that was cool that we got to do that when we went to Frenchman Street. And after we left Frenchman Street, we ended up taking an Uber back to Canal Street. And the other thing my youngest wanted to do was to look at this tennis shoe shop. We had seen it the night before and they had some unusual tennis shoes in the window and he's kind of like a tennis shoe collector nut with Nike in particular. And he really wanted a pair of Yeezy slides. And we walked through this shop and they didn't have them, but they had so many cool Nike like basketball type shoes, Jordans and stuff. And he loves looking at those. And so we left there. They told us to go right out of their store. And I'm telling you, there were like four or five places that had just a vast selection of shoes that both of my boys loved. And my oldest ended up getting a pair. My youngest didn't because he had his heart set on getting a pair of Yeezys and everybody was sold out. So after we were done shopping on that day, we ate some Greek food, which was, I would say, not as good as the Greek food I have back home. Probably not the place to eat Greek food down in the South. And the following morning we got up and left our Airbnb and headed towards Avery Island. For those of you who don't know about Avery Island, it is beautiful. It's where the Tabasco company was founded. And so we did take a tour of the Tabasco factory. So we are at the Tabasco factory. There is the Tabasco Museum. And I think the restaurant may be straight ahead. We're gonna go check out the food options. Here is the museum country store, 1868 restaurant. Entering the Tabasco Greenhouse. So this is the Barrel Museum. So this is the Barrel Warehouse. And this is all of the barrels that are full of peppers ground up with salt to age for three years. These barrels are where they, they blend it up after it gets out of the aging barrels. So we've got the bottling operation happening here. The wrappers are getting put on here. We ate at the Tabasco restaurant and I didn't eat, I wasn't hungry, but apparently the food was pretty good and they had like every flavor of Tabasco that you could ever want to try on the table to put on your po' boys. And so I ended up just having like a Virgin Bloody Mary, which was 
pretty fun because they had a Bloody Mary bar and I got to put like olives and celery and okra and all kinds of things in it. It was like eating, it was like drinking a salad. And so after we finished eating and touring and shopping at the museum, we took, I think it was called the Jungle Tour or the Jungle Gardens, something like that. But the family had founded a nature preserve that you could drive through that was about three miles. You're driving through the Jungle Grove Garden. Yeah, the Wasuri Arch does not have many flowers on it right at the moment. Or several palm trees. So we were thinking we would not go to Bird City, but now we are going to Bird City because we saw a peak of it and it looked fantastic. So here's the Bird City information. In case we didn't know, alligators are in fact dangerous. This is Bird City on Avery Island, and it's just like a home for all these different types of birds. So there is an alligator. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you spot it? I can see it. And we had been bummed that our swamp tour got canceled because we didn't get to see any alligators. And so it was really cool because right when we started driving through the swamp, we started seeing alligators. And of course, my husband and my oldest had to hop out and try to see them closer, which terrified me. I'm like, dummy, get back in the car. But they didn't listen. But luckily, we all made it home with all of our appendages. So that's a good thing. But we drove through this swamp and it was also a botanical garden so we got to see lots of beautiful flowers really cool trees with like the hanging moss it was so so pretty and there was a part that had some sort of a buddhist i think temple but we didn't go look at that we just drove by it and it was just a really neat experience to be able to get a little bit of the swamp from the comfort of our car and the day was sunny and it was gorgeous so that was the end of our Avery Island experience. I would recommend it. We drove then to Little Rock, stayed the night, and got up and went to the Bill Clinton Museum. And we didn't spend a lot of time there. It was something that I thought we should see since we were driving by. But I don't know. It wasn't my favorite presidential museum that I've been to. I haven't been to that many, but I really liked both Kennedy and Lincoln's presidential museums better than Clinton's. And it just had to do with the exhibits and how the information was presented. It wasn't as easy for me to absorb information at Clinton's museum as it was at the other ones that I've been to. I also may have just been like information overloaded at that point. So it was because it was the end of our trip. I don't know, but we ended up wrapping up the day in Little Rock by going to a nice breakfast joint and then hopping in the car and headed home. So that was the extent of our New Orleans trip. It was kind of a whirlwind. We were only gone five days, not even five full days. So it wasn't that long that we were away, but we did pack a lot into that five days. I hope you've enjoyed the summary and the photographs and videos that I have inserted as I've been talking to you. I always enjoy sharing my vacations with you, and I hope my mix of some Louis Vuitton into that has kept you entertained. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so that you are notified of future exciting content such as this. Also, go find me on Instagram. The name there's the same is the at symbol, then the handbag housewife, all lowercase. You can DM me there or you can email me at the handbag housewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. 
Bye.